We'll start with a simple story that I heard, which is not mine, but a chiropractor went to a World Health Organization convention, and there were many doctors of all kinds, <laughs> and he went to the bathroom, and he did what he did. There was another doctor there, and he finished, and he was ready to leave, and this doctor said, excuse me? And he came to him and said, oh, you're a chiropractor. In our school, they taught us that after you do what you do, you need to wash your hands. So he looks at him and he tags, no, you're from Harvard. Huh? He said, in our chiropractic school, they taught us not to pee on our hands. <laughs> so that's a chiropractor. Now, um, what is, one thing I want to say before I start, <coughs> I'm almost a terrible lecturer. My language is not so great. And, and I really don't care, because I hear only for one reason, to convey to you a message. So I'm not the best, the best speaker, and I'll try to give as much as I can. I lecture good. I can be a bit better lecturer if I'm being asked more questions. So then it can lead me to, to a better uh, lecture. So you're very welcome from second one to go ahead and ask me questions, OK? So what is it really chiropractic? I was in a little, little a seminar, and we were a few chiropractors, some of them like 20 years, 30 years, some of them two years, and I asked them, what is chiropractic? Anybody wants to tell me what is chiropractic, really? What is a chiropractor? You better be chiropractors. Anybody? And that was their exact thing out of my friends, my colleagues, they tried to say something, and nothing came out. And I did that. So you in the profession 20 years, 25 years, three years, what is a chiropractor? Chiropractic is the most amazing, the most powerful healing profession in the world. There is nothing that can compare to this profession. Nothing that can compare to the people, the doctors, that convey that. How many people here think, by the way, in the United States, what I heard today, there are about 40% of the car practice going out of business for some reason. 40%. They're going to school, they learn, as, as you know how difficult it is, how many years it takes and how much money it takes, and there's such a rate of dropout in the chiropractic profession. Me and my friend went to Michigan State for pre-med. I, I went to uh, veterinary school, and then I went to do pre-med. And then when I found out about chiropractic, I went to chiropractic school. But we went, both of us, he went to med school, I went to chiropractic school. And the moment that he finished his med school, he had $80,000 a year somewhere in a hospital, somewhere doing almost 100% nothing. First year, he just stepped in. He worked shift here and there. And from there, he climbed down to 80, and then 200, to 120, to 200, to $250,000 a year. To tell the truth, I have no idea what he's doing. And the chiropractor is coming out, they're in a big struggle. Some are very successful because they know what chiropractic is, and some are not. My brother graduated in Sydney Chiropractic College. He said to me, it's it. You need to go speak to them. I said to him, why? He said, half of them couldn't get into medical school, so they went to chiropractic school. Some of them thought that it's something like physiotherapy, so they, they said they'll go something in between. But they really didn't know what is chiropractic. Are we below medical doctors in any way? 
I'm getting a phone call from my lawyer. He's a very good friend of mine. He says to me, do me a favor, on your way, I have two clinics. On your way to the clinic in South, right now I moved it to Tel Aviv a few years ago. There is a nephew of mine, she's six months old, she's in, in intensive care, every day her blood oxygen level, saturation level goes down, and they're losing her. They need every treatment and every exam there is to do, and they're losing the, the little baby. They don't understand why. Nothing. To me, the biggest favor he said to me, and he knows I don't like to stop in the way and I'm running and I'm rushing between the clinics. He said to me, do me a favor, stop at the hospital, treat the child, and do it's a personal favor. I said to him, I'll do that. Do me one favor. Tell the parents that I don't have time for questions. I'm coming in, I'm examining, doing, and I'm leaving. If that's okay with you, I'll do that. And he said, yeah, they called me, he said, please do that. I'm, st I'm stepping into the hospital. Six months old baby, father, mother, sisters, uncles, uh, grandfather, whatever, sitting there, they're all already mourning. Because the child every day declines. Oxygen level goes down and the child is life, her life leaves her. So I go in, introduce myself, I look at the baby, I tell the parents, remember, Chaim said what he said, he said yes, I look at the baby, adjust the baby, and I left. As I'm getting half an hour away from the hospital, my phone rings. Hi, my lawyer. Said, I don't know what you did, but the oxygen level went to 96% within that 30 minutes. What did you do? I said, Hi, if I told the parents not to ask me, why are you asking me? The next day, the baby was released. The next month, the two other sisters came in, they were like four and five, then the mother, then the father, then the grandmother, then another sister, and then another aunt, and now the all the other side of the family are my patients. I don't understand, the whole hospital with all the arrangement, all the examinations, everything they had, they couldn't do what they should have done. With this little baby? That's what chiropractic is. The most powerful profession in the, for the health as a health provider. You go into the world like a chiropractor. A chiropractor? So I meet this beautiful woman. She's my wife today. We date. And I asked her about her family. So she, she introduced me to one of her, her brother-in-law. So I asked him, what do you do? She said to me, he's a, he's a kind of a doctor. And she was very, very ashamed. I said, what kind of a doctor? I said, have you heard about chiropractic? I said, no. I was a pre-med student at that time. No, I, I never heard about it. Explain me. And she was a kind of a doctor, but not a real doctor. And he was, it was kind of hush-hush about it because it was a real thing. After he explained me what he was doing, I said, wow. I was seven months before finishing pre-med and bachelor degrees in science. So I sent my, all my information instead of Michigan State University of Medicine, to Palmer and Davenport. I sent all my forms. I want to be a chiropractor. That's what I did. He said to me, really? I said, yeah, really. What? Said, it doesn't make any sense to you? He's a chiropractor, right? It's a kind of a doctor. I'm going to Davidson, Michigan to check in chiropractic office. So the doctor meets me. He takes out a duck. He looks at me. And I look at them, I look at them, and they said to me, the only quack between us is the duck. <laughs> Scratch my head, what's going on here? What's with you people? 
what we do is profession. The most powerful profession in the world. You have the tools, the permission, the license to do the best for any patient in the world. Now, is medicine at its place? Yeah, it does. Do we have emergencies that chiropractors don't deal with? Yeah, they do. So are they great? They're great. Are they doing an incredible job in the emergency level? They do. But everything is emergency. Very small portion is emergency. Most of it, it's us. Where are we born? Oslo. Where in Oslo? Right outside. In what type of setup? Hospital, home, what? Pardon? Where are we born? In the hospital? Yeah. Anybody else was born in the hospital? Raise your hand. Most of you. A newborn baby, new life, is born to a sick place with sick people running it. That's their mode. Sick. And trust me, when you're in the mud, sunk with the jeep, I love jeeps, so when you're in the mud, sunk in the jeep, with your jeep, you can bring them into your jeep, they can try to do anything with the jeep, they will, they, they will not take you out of the mud. Because they're in the mode of being stuck in the mud, they're in the mode of disease. We are in the mode of, of, anybody? Health. What? Health. No, health, of course. Mode of ability, possibility, potential. We are in a mode that give our patients what no one, no one, no one in the Western world or in the Eastern world can give our patients because you and I are in charge, activate, potentialize the one system that runs all the systems in the world, the nervous system. How thick is the spinal cord, guys? You know anatomy better than I do, you just got out of exams. Is that thick? Yeah? That thick. All our life is running through that thickness that runs in with a spinal, with the spine. You and I are in charge and, and have the best ability in the world to work with it, to correct it, to potentialize that, to bring life into the bodies and souls of people. Nobody can do it like us. Now, anybody disagree? I saw on Yahoo the other day, my wife brought to my attention, you must see that. Somebody got out of the closet. So, uh, another, okay, another gay, another lesbian, another, she said, no, 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 you must read it. I'm looking and I see that the artists, the actors in Hollywood now, coming out of the closet at the meeting that they're being treated by chiropractors. <laughs> Guys, what's with this world? One of the mothers coming into my office with her neck pain, back pain, I don't remember already. She came and said to her, hi, how are you? Great. And then I saw her with her little girl in the hand, she's a three-year-old girl. And um, I see the child has total crossed eyes, and I know that the child has no cross eyes. Her left eye moved totally to the middle, middle of the eye, to the nose. And the right eye is okay. So what happened to her? She said, we don't know. She woke up in the morning <coughs> a week ago, and that is the end of the story. That's what happened to her. She stayed like that. So they rushed her to the hospital that morning, they did MRI, brain MRI, and they did 
uh, MRI to the neck, everything was right, everything was good in their perception. So I look at the child and said to the mother, what, what is new in your family? She said nothing. And then, as she says nothing, the husband stepped in with the newborn. How we call? What do you, how do you think that affected the three-year-old? When she's the eldest one and then somebody else comes on the mother hands with a new baby, how will it affect her? Anybody? It will. Is the emotion can change our body? Is the emotion, our emotions can change our spine? And then the spine can change our life and our bodies? Can it? Absolutely. So, by the way, what do you think was the suggestion of the husband what to do with the child? Anybody? Surgery. What do you think? They have no clue what's happening to the child. But I want to do surgery to correct the left eye. What do you think about that? I said, MRI is good. This is good. All the tests are good. The child is healthy. The child is hurt. That was her weakness. The weakness maybe was in the neck, wasn't it? She was subluxated in the neck. It was activated by stress. Is it possible, guys? Are you familiar with the word subluxation? <laughs> so, we treated the poor child without surgery, of course, right? And three weeks later, way before it started motioning, but three weeks later she was 100% with the eye back to its place. So they went back to the neurologist in Hadassah and Karim, Jerusalem Hospital. It's the biggest hospital there. So they said to the mother, that was a uh, spontaneous remission to the eye going back to its place because nothing was wrong to begin with. <coughs> this is chiropractic. From then on, doesn't matter what, she would come. She would ask. It doesn't matter what you have. Dr. Krishna, nice to see you. He knows what chiropractic is. <laughs> Absolutely. So many questions, guys. There was this lady, I got a phone call from this lady. Her husband called me. She's in a wheelchair for eight to 12 months. She's in a wheelchair, she's 25 years old. And she's in a lot of pain, and that's why she's in a wheelchair. She can't use her legs. She can move the legs, but she's in a lot of pain when she does that. They called me and they said to me, can you fix her? I said, no. I can't. So this, they, they were very disappointed because they were recommended to me, they, re they recommended me to them by few people. So they turned back to the people, and they said, well, you said you can help. So they called me back again, the people called me back, and said, what do you mean you can help? I said, I cannot fix her, I can help them. I'm, I'm not a fixer. They came anyway. They said in consultation, x-rays are good, MRI is good, brain is good, all the exams are good, they have no clue what she has, she's in wheelchairs, she cannot step up, she cannot walk, she's in constant pain. She's 25 years old, she has a child, her husband is a commander somewhere. So the first question they asked me was, what does she have? So she's subluxated, we checked her, so she's subluxated. So this is the first time they ever heard the term. So they got very pissed off at the orthopedic doctors and neurologists. Because nobody told them that there is such a thing that might put her in this chair. The next question was, can you fix it? And I said again, no. Can we deal with the subluxation and 
create a possibility for her to heal? 100%. Million percent. Absolutely yes. So they were very confused. You can fix or not. But we're not fixing people, guys. The last thing you want ever anybody to tell you that you're a back doctor, neck doctor, cracking spines. We might access life through the back, the spine, the neck, the head, the extremities. But we're not back doctors. We are ultimate doctors. Ultimate doctors. Not big doctors. If somebody wants to challenge me, he's welcome from any profession. I'll go with them at any given time, in every given, any given place. We're not big doctors. We're not fixing backs. We apply through that. We access through that. We help through that. We potentialize the nervous system through that. We create a possibility for the person to stop one pattern to another one. To go from inability to ability. That's what we are. Don't confuse and don't let anyone in the world put you as a back doctor in a small department somewhere and all you can do is crack backs. So this insurance company called me. We want to employ you. I said, okay. I went to an interview. The interviewer was a friend of mine, a medical doctor. She heard about me. She knew what I was doing. She said, I want you to build with me this alternative clinic for this insurance company. So let's see. So they brought the reflexologist and osteopaths and shiatsu and this and this and this and this and this. And I said to her, so what's with that? Are you going to pick me with that? I said, Isn't, aren't you alternative medicine? I said, no. Are you alternative medicine? No, my wife. Do we have any alternative? <laughs> we don't. No, we do not have alternative. Ultimate, that's what we're doing. I'm sorry, no, I'm happy if I sound cocky. But that's what we're doing. By the way, the one 25 year old that was in a wheelchair, six months later, was driving, walking, dancing, and she brought another child to the world. <coughs> All we did was car practice. That's all we did. Oh. Okay. So I said to her, if you want me to work in this clinic, we're running a parallel. I decide who comes to me. So they brought a few other chiropractors too. So they gave, they gave us one room, one bed, and they said to us, <clears throat> every half an hour you see a patient. I said to her, and what am I going to do with the next 28 minutes? So tell me what I mean. That's what we do. That's how we operate. That's what all our clinics in the country is like that. We have that. So, sorry. I want eight rooms to ten rooms. I determine how long I see a patient when I see a patient for a very short time. I want my salary different. And I'm on all the decisions. And forget that I'm not working here eight hours a week. I'm working here four hours a week. That's all. So they said, no, no need. So no, fine. I get a phone call the next day. The head doctor of all these insurance companies wants an interview, to interview me. And she said, and you've got only 10 minutes. I said, wow, so much. Right. <laughs> she came. She's put in time. After two hours of receiving, she said, Give her an adjustment. I got them 10 rooms, all the terms I wanted, four hours a week, 
we brought half of the income of the whole clinic with maybe 30, 20 practitioners. Chiropractic brought half of the income of that clinic because other insurance company people came to our clinic, paid private to see us. That's what they heard. That's what we did. That's chiropractic. If <coughs> the current chiropractor, which shuts down everywhere, which declining because they classify you, not me, as back doctor, as alternative doctors, as semi-doctors, as sub-physios, a sub-medical something, you have no future. It's declining fast. And you're spending a lot of money, a lot of time to become one. And in the real field, it's not happening. That's my title. Chiropractic future for the future chiropractor. And I'll emphasize again, another back crackers. You are the ultimate doctor in the health profession. I'm not talking about emergency now. That can help people like no other in the whole world. I'm telling you, the whole world. Put it in your minds. Put it in your hearts. If a student of chiropractic would not understand that, chances are gleam. Because any, <laughs> any medical doctor that finish anywhere, in two seconds they have work. Everybody is going automatically there. I'll go back to the question where I was born in a hospital. Guys, the medical profession is the champion of champions of mass hypnosis to people to where they should go, where they should be, what they should take when they feel sick, ill, diseased. They automatically go there. I got this young mother. I don't want to tell you how many of our family I'm treating, but I will. Yeah. <laughs> she came with severe um, fistula in her anus. Severe infection under. It's a, it's a, it's a, cyber, it, it's a type of uh, Subcutaneous infection, very, very, very painful. By the way, chiropractors treat that, guys. So if you have a patient like that, will you accept it? Anybody? Now that not you, Christian. Anybody? Will you? Yeah, I will. Yeah. What does that have to do with you? you correct the spine panel. What does that have to do with that? Okay, great. So we do not. Treat that condition, right? We treat who? Person. <coughs> so she comes in, she said, I got that. By the way, she had surgery twice. <coughs> it, didn't, it didn't fix the problem. Why didn't it fix the problem, by the way? It was no, because the left the same person as it is, as it is. In the same wrong direction of his health, her health. And they try to, of, to do something that brings the body to attention that she's not right. Guys, what is a subluxation purpose? What is the purpose of subluxation? Anybody? Please, you students. Next. Anybody? It's not, it's not wrong. It's not wrong. But I want another one. Please. Okay. Interference. Interference? Perfect. Circuit breaker. If you will not have a subluxation, a major thing will go. So you have a circuit breaker falls down that tells you that something in the life of this person 
is not right. So instead of burning the whole nervous system or the whole system, a subluxation occurs. It's genius. Ingenious. So yes, when she'll come to you with a fistula, she will be subluxated 100%. Yes. And if she comes with a cancer, sore throat, any condition. If she'll come with depression, 24 schools of mental health schools, uh, not schools, hospitals in the United States in the past, chiropractic. 24 chiropractic hospitals for mental illnesses. Subluxation based with the best results of any psychiatry ever. So subluxation is a circuit breaker. We, when they step into our offices with whatever disease, whatever condition they have, we know where to look. We know what to approach, how to deal with that, and how to bring them back to life with full potential life, mental, physical, emotional, chemical. And then we can lift the breaker again, the switch again, and they'll function great. So this girl brought her father. He was due surgery on his neck because he was diminished his muscles in his hand. <laughs> he is a major league CEO in one of the biggest drugs, drugs company in the world. So I went to the hospital. They lined up for him the best neurosurgeons. But, and then they decided to wait with the, with the surgery because they thought he had subtype, some sub type of autoimmune disease that hurt his nerves and they started on drug treatment which is very close, almost chemo. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pill that called Imoan, which is suppressing your, your immune system. Suppressing your immune system. I looked at his MRI, I looked at his x-rays, check him out and said, listen, and he's a, he's a hot shot. Everybody wants to kill line, and he had all the professors on his side. His wife is a head nurse in this hospital. They sent me, follow me, I look at him and said, listen, this pill that you take has nothing to do with what you have. <laughs> this pill is so dangerous. This pill alone creates up to 5% to 10% the opportunity for cancer. That's the pill itself. Now, let's say that you have what you have, and you need to take the pill, let's say. But it's nothing to do with it. He looked at his wife, she looked at them, they totally misbelief. the professor, that professor, that professor said that, and they left. I don't care. I really didn't care. Two weeks later, he steps in. By the way, when they leave, I said to them, the door is open. If you need to come back again, everything is cool. Come. Two weeks later, he came with her again. Can you look at the actions again? Can you look at the MRI again? I said, yeah. The problems are here. Actually, I said, what manifests your problem is true here. It has nothing to do with the condition they gave you. As far as I'm concerned, you can stop the pill immediately this second and start treatment. This time, you start treatment without stopping the, the pill. And you start improving after the first two weeks, but you start becoming very ill for what? The pill! So I send him back to the professor. I tell, him, tell the professor that you ask to stop the pill. He says, my friend, I said, don't ask him. He went and the professor said to him, no, I think you should stop the pill. Yeah. Um, he said, what do you mean? Uh, I said, maybe you can stop the pill. Again, anger set in. Today, 
is eight months after you started with me, he sees me once a month. He's happy as could be. 99% of his condition stopped. He had no more tinglings. His muscles stopped wasting, stopped wasting anymore. He's running, he's playing a little basketball. He's happy. He's happy. And he had at least three to four professors telling him that he had this disease because it left. Listen, guys, they have no clue. I'm sorry, they have no clue. I don't say, I don't want to say they don't have a clue. In that condition, they have no clue. And if you put the x-ray or the MRI on the board, it's obvious. So, this lady comes to the Cairo. She's 90 years old. She said to me, Doctor, I have very, very silent parts and no smell to them at all. Can you help me with that? Says the old woman. So he said to her, Sure. Lay her on the bed, does what he does. He said to her, Come back in a week. She looks at them, she doesn't understand too much, but she goes home and she's coming back after a week and she says, Doctor, I don't know what you did, but now I can't still hear them because they're very mild, but they stink like hell. <laughs> so he said, well, after we fixed your sinuses, now we're going to deal with your hearing. That's a kind of any questions, guys? Please. Uh, yes, so as I understand it, you're saying that um, a civilization occurs as an uh, intelligent adaptation to the environment, kind of? Uh, or my question is, so, so why would the body uh, produce or... or um, uh, if the civilization occurs due to innate or if it's an intelligent adaptation, why would it occur? Excellent. Uh, you said a little bit about it, but can you exp uh, expand a little bit? Excellent. <clears throat> so, you have an apartment house, okay? And you have in the house a boiler, you have air conditioner, you have lights, you have TV, you have computer, you have all that sockets of electricity and departments of them that leads to your main box, right? In your main box, you have a, <clears throat> to each one, you have a br circuit breaker, right? So if one goes wrong, and there is a shortage in one, what would happen? It will fall. Why would it fall? To stop what's happening here, not blow up the whole system. Make sense? That's what subluxation is for. And that's a genius thing. So me and you, Instead of going and fixing the air conditioning and fixing this and fixing this and fixing this, we're going to the board, we look at the board and we say, huh, what's with your emotion, little three-year-old? Why your emotions blew a circuit? A little baby brother that creates a lot of emotional stress for you? Something went? Instead of her becoming ill and that and ill and that and start being going into the emotion, she needed a breaker, a circuit breaker. It stops. We know that. That's why our profession is the most amazing profession in the world. Because we deal with the core. With the core of the cores. And we, it's the ultimate thing. So and they, can, they can come to me with any, 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 any condition. Except one. That happened to me. We were asked, now, for the record, I'm doing it as a joke, but it was real. We were asked to treat the Israeli parliament members. So I was the only one that came without a bed and without tools, well, I don't use tools. And I stood there and said, Dr. Dreamer, aren't you treating today? I said, well, I would, but we need spines and brains. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only condition I don't. 
you know. But that again, that's a joke, but that was real. I, I said that there, I said it. I, to, to, to be honest, said that. And they looked at me not so happy, and I said, I don't care. <laughs> I would go for this guy later. And so are you saying that chiropractic isn't just limited to the location and correction of subluxation, but, um, but also it's about finding the cause of the subluxation? Beautiful. Now, Any one of you that will have a clinic in the future, if your clinic, your center, forget the word clinic, <laughs> if your health center will be minimum to having the word health center for everybody that steps from the street to your, to your center, you are disservicing chiropractic. Which means, when you're setting up your wellness centers anywhere in the world, you will convey the best health possible way to anybody that is either sick or healthy. When they're healthy, they'll come in to improve more their potential. When they're sick or diseased, they'll come in to get the best service and it doesn't matter what condition they're in the world. It doesn't matter if it's Crohn's, if it's cancer, if it's schizophrenia, paranoia, they're all stepping into my office. I do not treat their condition. I have the ability to bring them with chiropractic treatment with psychological understanding and with biochemical understanding to the full potential of the nervous system and the rest of the systems because of that. So this guy steps into my office exactly a month and a half ago with severe CTS bilateral. Anybody? CTS? Carpal, carpal tunnel syndrome. You familiar with that? He steps with bilateral, but before he calls me, he said, listen, I'm up to surgery. He's 75 years old. I'm up to surgery, and is there is anything you can do for me? And my secretary asked me that. Said, well, what's with you? Why is not here yesterday? So she said, oh, sorry, sorry, Chico. Mail, yes, you can, he said you can come in. The next day, mail is in. 75 year old. How are you? How are you? Great, great. He knows me before because I treat him and his family for many other things. For them it's for the other things. For me it's for one thing. Yeah? The condition is their vehicle to come to me. It's not their problem. Is it? The condition is only their vehicle to come to us. He comes in and I examine the man. I check him. He's subluxated. He's messed up. His spine is dead. His spine is dead. He's 75 years old. You have degeneration. You have all the things that you wish. And I'll tell you what. If you did the regular chiropractic work with him, he will go to surgery. You hear what I said? So he said to me, so what do I have? I said, no. what do you eat every day? Now listen. He gets up in the morning and drinks a shake of chicken. Lunch, he eats chicken breast. For dinner, he has chicken patties. He brushes teeth with chicken paste. <laughs> chicken, chicken, chicken. In two minutes, I would start going like this in his office. He's the, every day he's eating four times, five times chicken. You know why? That's all his wife knows how to cook. What to cook? She cooks chicken. He eats chicken. Seven days a week, he eats chicken. I said to the man, don't you think that might be a little problem? What does that have to do with you? So, biochemical condition will create a visceral response, right? A visceral response can create a spinal disturbance. Yes, yes, absolutely, yes. So he has a biochemical visceral response to the spine. And he's subluxated and he can't move, and his hands are hardly can move, and he starts wasting muscles too, and he has tingles all the time. 
So I adjusted them very mildly every day. Not every day, every other day. Very mildly. Nothing to do what you think will do with CTS. But I told them that no more chicken for one month. Nothing. None. And then he said, not on Sabbath? <laughs> he said, no. One time in March? No. This, no. This, nothing. No. Absolutely not. His wife got upset. <laughs> She's going to cook him now. She knows I'm going to do chicken, obviously. Listen, one month he didn't have one chicken. 100% CTS symptoms are gone. If I was to think as a medical terminology chiropractor or 100% subluxation based thinking, I would lose him. He would go surgery and let me tell you, nothing would happen. He would get messed up in surgery. So as I thought about the little child that her mother brought another baby, that she comes to subluxation through emotional state, I would go and think about Mayer, that what will bring him to subluxation state. So it, it requires you, all of you, to be the best in biochemistry, to be very good in psychology, psychiatry. Learn that. Emphasize that. Acquire that. Don't think you click the bone and everything is gone. Be real doctors. Know your biochemistry excellent, no psychology excellent. You a chiropractor, you're only a chiropractor. No, you're only a super doctor. When they come into your office because you're a super doctor, doesn't matter what they come in with, you will know the answer. What leads them to what? What creates what? And how you lead them to the best possible health. Them, their family, their neighbors, everything else. Please. I have a question. You said before that you treat a lot of people and they come to you um, because of conditions, yeah? And you said to them it's because of the condition that they come to you, yeah? Uh, do you spend time explaining them like this model to them or do you leave that out because it's... Um... Very important that you set up a model, very important. I'll say it 50 times. The most important <laughs> meeting with that patient is the first one. If you fail to, to make him understand, listen to what I'm saying, and I also explain, to make him understand with various ways, because to everybody I speak differently, <clears throat> to what the level of understanding is, that that's the only vehicle that brings him to me. That's not your problem. We're not going to deal with the vehicle because we are not mechanics. We are doctors that will help you. Now, doctors, when I said that, it's not because I'm a doctor, trust me. It's because I have the tools, the understanding, the compassion, the will, to help you to, do it your, to be at your best and your condition is a blessing and I'm not going to work about eradicating the condition but help you come to your fullest wealth and health and your condition will go away or not it doesn't matter anymore to them by the way it doesn't matter they sometimes will come four months with a back pain and, and they'll say to me they won't after a while, they won't talk to me about it anymore. They will not. And then they'll tell me, they'll ask me, Dr. Dreamer, my neighbor has that and that. And I start looking at them like this. Oh no, we understand. I can, we can bring it, right? They start understanding. We're teaching them that these are only the vehicles. So it doesn't matter what's the name of the vehicle. They can be in our centers, health, wellness centers. Because we are really very, very capable. I don't know how many times I'll emphasize this. You are the real, real future 
health providers. Medicine way <coughs> before long lost its path. I was on a vacation uh, on March and I met this surgeon on a vacation resort. He's doing mouth surgery, he's uh, ear and ear, ear throat and, uh, and uh, th uh, ear throat end. I know, practitioner specialist. He asked me what, 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 uh, what type of a doctor I am. I said, I'm a chiropractor. I saw he's a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> and then I take a step forward. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I just do. And he said, I need to tell you something. He says, So I oh, knew it's coming. First of all, he was married to an osteopath and he divorced her. <laughs> That's the truth. And he said, Listen, I realized that we're not treating them. We're poisoning them. So, new stories coming. We're poisoning them. We really don't know what we're doing. So, I start, and he's looking like to the sides to do something else. I start talking to them and touching them. And you know what? I get much greater results than what they're coming. And you know, I hardly do anything. But I have to give him something. He does. I don't know what he's doing. He said, you don't understand. Now, I'm, and after I met you, because he's asking me what I do, I'm going to apply that more. Maybe we can do something together. I said, no, I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, the end of the evening was that I treated his wife in the hotel because she said to him, I'm going to get treatment from him. He said, I got the secret this time. We don't touch the people. We don't even know to touch the people. You don't. My sister and my other sister called me Thursday at 1 o'clock. No, I was on my way to the airport. My sister here did something, she, and she, something went on her back. So they called me. And don't, don't worry, I'm okay, I'm this, I'm not, that, that, and that happened to me. They, they're both talking to me. And, and the, in, the, in the middle of the night, she got really very bad pains, and, and my other sister took her to the hospital, private hospital. I get into the private hospital. They check her, x-ray her, and then they give her three very severe painkillers, two severe painkillers and one sedative. Everybody heard about the Yemenite treatment or the Polish treatment? Anybody from Poland? So I withdraw Polish. No? No? Okay. So Polish treatment? No? So if a Polish guy gets a heart attack, they're taking a hammer and they're slamming it with a big toe on the foot. The heart attack goes away, trust me. You see the skies when somebody's hitting you with the, on your toe with a hammer. Try it. That's what they did to her. She, after she started using the medications, she got so ill and sick and vomiting constantly and being totally out of mind, the back pain was a secondary. The treatment succeeded. Because <laughs> she hardly felt the back anymore. So she called me, she said, what to do? I said, stop everything you think. That's all. We treated her yesterday, today, yesterday, today. today, and things changed. Very fast, by the way. And not with a hammer. <laughs> Anybody? Please. Uh, we'll go to her because she's waiting. Um, I don't study here, so this is my first time hearing about anything. But I just have a question. So if Pain is a reflection of our emotional state, and so also, also okay. Also. Not necessarily also. And yeah. say I suffer from depression, and someone adjusts my back. How is that adjustment going to deal with my depression or whatever emotional pain I'm experiencing? Okay. So, first of all, thank you for the question. It's a very good question. Now, when you would be walking like this. Would you be depressed? Would you walk with a spine like mine? Would you be depressed? I'm 75 years old. Does it show? 
like that and it's locked in this position I'll tell you jokes what will happen nothing so when I'll work through your spine I didn't say your back when I walk through your spine with your spine with you and create a situation when you go through that would you be depressed no, you won't. that's how chiropractic works that's why chiropractic is the most powerful, successful, successful profession, health profession in the world. So, in that case, um, you're treating what's manifested later, not the cause? So you're not treating the depression itself? No. So, it can come back? Well, if it comes back, if it's coming back, if, I said if it's coming back, would you look on, upon it differently? Would you know that you have hope and you can change it? Because there is such a thing that can help you with it, would it? Yes. So sometimes it can come back. Sometimes I tell my, sometimes I tell my patients, um, I ask them, especially the one that the Yiddish, the Yiddish speakers want. Everybody, anybody know what Yiddish is? It's a Jewish old language that, religious people speak and I said to them, so you know Yiddish? Said, of course, of course. So I'm going to tell you a sentence in Yiddish and I'm saying to him a sentence in Arabic actually. So I said to him, well, uh, Abdul can, can translate. That can be understanding as well. Okay, I said, Alifat Mat, what dies, die. What I said, but first of all, you don't understand because I said in Arabic and think I'm going to say it in Yiddish. So, then, so I said, what died, died. What, what went, when? <laughs> it doesn't matter if it comes back. What matters that the rest that you have to go with is going to be addressed and potentialized. So you're going to be in the greatest shape you can within the condition that you have left with. Make sense? That's what we do as chiropractors. Trust me, in medicine, and I'm calling somebody else because, because I have it also, I want it too. At the most they can bring you to would be to the minimum that you were before. That's all. They cannot potentialize you above what you already acquired. At the minimum, they stabilize you to the maximum in your minimum. Not in chiropractic. In chiropractic, will optimize you to your potential that you can acquire and don't have yet because you are subluxated. And if you are subluxated from your emotional mental state, your biochemical state, or your physical state. That's what chiropractic is about. Please. So when you say free uh, subluxation, does it doesn't matter um, you can use any technique? They all work the same or does it okay. depend on the practitioner or the patient? First of all, if you knew that you are very, very capable chiropractor and you have the best tools, and by the way, your question will steer me into something that I want to talk about and I'm going to answer you that too. But if you know that you have the best tools in your hands, the best tools in your knowledge, but listen to this, but the biggest intent in your ability to help your patients. Would it help or work any technique? Absolutely yes. Now, do not slack on your techniques. Acquire techniques, learn them perfectly. You can modify them to your personality. 
Acquire a few techniques. Don't get stuck on one on one method because that's the best or that the best or that's the best. There is no the best. In chiropractic there are a few dozens of techniques. They're not for nothing there because anybody will everybody will respond differently to your technique. So sometimes you will have to motion a bone. Sometimes you will have to only make a contact. Sometimes you only want to have to speak to the person. What, a chiropractor doesn't speak to his patients? Or a Russian little nurse coming into my office. She's shy, she works in the hospital, she suffers a lot. And she has back problems, she has health problems, she has problems. In, in, in Russian, it's said to me, but you move! I know a few words here. He said, I don't know. Listen, the patients are patients, they know why they're sick. They don't know how to put it exactly, but they know why they're sick. And then we got to the mental man. <laughs> she's being bullied in the hospital. Because she's bullied, she's shy, and she's pushed over. So she got subluxated to the point where she couldn't walk anymore. That's it. <laughs> so the great hospital says, what? Your staff will do the surgery for you. Here and now. She heard about me. She came to hear before the surgery if I have anything to offer her. I said, maybe. We treated her. Within a short time, she went back to work. And uh, we, were, we did a little work, bit work about the bullying. And she started being a bulldog herself. And she went to the hospital, she dared. And when she dared, nobody bullied her anymore. And the subluxation did not repeat, but that's not the story. The story is that she has a son and a daughter. And one time, in the first week or two, they came to my office with the mother and they waited in, a, in the waiting room. So she introduced me to them, 15 and 19. I shook her day and then I went to the treatment room. I have a treatment room, many beds. I work with many people in one shot. Days after, I saw these, these two characters sitting on the chairs outside my clinic. The mother wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Hi guys. Hi. It was weird, but you know, I went with that. The drink water, the set, and they just sat. 20 minutes, a half an hour, they left. The next day, the next other day, the mother came and they came too. I went to the same seat in the set. I said to the mother, what's with these two? I said, listen, I don't know, it's weird. But when they come to you and they sit on these chairs, they feel that something happens to them. So they want to come all the time now. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a joke. That's the intent. Then I said to them, listen guys, no free meals here. <laughs> But to go to actuality, I said to them, if you want, if you like what you feel, I said to them, 15 or 19, they said, yeah, I said, so go into the treatment room. Because there, you will feel it much, much stronger and powerful. It will serve you much, much better. And they both became my patients. So what is chiropractic? Listen, guys. The most important message I'm conveying to the few of you here that going to be really my future too. You are my future too. Is do not blow your future with limiting what chiropractic is capable of. It's the most powerful profession in the world. And if you're talking about real doctors, you are the one. You're not Neo, but you are the one. <laughs> you know Matrix? <laughs> so, this friend of mine that goes to medical school, and I went to chiropractic school, we meet in, our play, in, our, in my house. Then he came with his girlfriend, we visited. I was in my last year, he was in his last year. 
we did everything, we did pre-med together. We studied together, went through everything together. Is this where also we went and he went to and they came to my house, we sat, had lunch, and we hear on the door. My wife opened the door, the neighbor kid that I know steps in. Come quickly. I said to Michael, Michael, come trouble. We run, we think a fight, yeah? <laughs> he, has, he has a black belt in karate. I am black belt in my pants. <laughs> so we run into the neighbor. I know the neighbor. The neighbor is a mechanic. He's a smoker, he's a drinker, he's, he's fixing the cars in the street, and uh, it's, it's a family, nice family. Nice American family from the Midwest, if you know what it is. And I get into the room, the father sits on the table, he's a big guy, sits on the table. <coughs> so I said to Michael, you're the medical doctor, go ahead. <laughs> he's doing exactly this to me. I said, you're the medical doctor, what he has? Now, my neighbor looks at me like, what? I don't say nothing. I just see, I see, uh, uh, uh. Well, I know he's not going through a heart attack. He was like 30 something. I know, I, I know he's a chain smoker. I said, Michael, what are you going to do? I said, really? I don't know. I said, okay. Doctor, no? I said, no. Do what you do. <coughs> I speak to the guy, what's going on? I just did this, I did the most motion, and I got caught. And he can breathe, he can move, he's on the table. So I'm okay, I don't worry about it. We'll it. So we cleared the table, I made sure the table is strong, it was a heavy table. I said to Michael, Michael, you have me set him, just set him back, we set him back, back, one little adjustment, anterior, just simple one between his shoulders. We turn him on the side, we sit him. <sighs> what did he do? Michael asked. He's the MD, right? He was very puzzled. He was very puzzled. I saw that. The other guy looked at me and said, anything that even a car, I'll fix it for you. <laughs> I never. And I had a clunky, clunky car, so it was a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is kind of rough. Now, why did they call 911 in America as 911 in a second? They call for everything. You piss in the street, they call 911. <laughs> why did they call 911? Because he knew his neighbor as a chiropractor. I wasn't a chiropractor already, I was in clinic. Last year, yeah, last year. Oh, I was like, it was obvious to me. What's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? Are we capable of doing it? Yeah. Like nobody else. Nobody. The Israeli Chiropractic Association, they'll kill me. Story, but I don't care. Was working 25 years, thank you. 25 years working on a license to license Israel. There's this doctor there that sits for 25 years and messing the chiropractors up, pulling them in, making mockery. So I said one day, I'm going to one of the meetings. I don't care. But you're not the board member. I said, I don't care. I'm coming. So the president, the vice president went. Uh, and then tagged along. They didn't like it. Right? Again, I don't care. We're sitting there. I can't believe my eyes. It's the, this doctor and his lawyer sitting there. And they're back and forth going with this. This you can do, but this you can. This you can, and this you can. Scratching my head. What's going on? That's what's going on for 25 years. So I said, excuse me. I don't understand that. What do you mean this we can do, this we can't? What do you mean? So she says to me, the lawyer, years did you study? She says to me. So there were nine academic years. So she, she looked at me, what? So why didn't you study to be a real doctor? <laughs> she says to me. And the other one sits there on his pedestal all happy. The medical doctor says to me, listen, when the day comes, when any medical doctor will be able to do what we do, that will be the happiest day of your life. And that death will never come. Do you have any other questions about real doctors? He said, no, no, it's okay. That was it. And we left. I left. 
What do you mean? What do you mean? Questions? Um, yeah, we see a lot of chiropractic and we get a lot of treatment ourselves, but when, if I was a patient and I came to your office, what would meet me out? What, what would happen? How do you replace it? How do you treat? How is it that I may help you? With what do you want me to help you? Name it. You want a car loan? We'll give you even that. A loan for a car. What do you want? No, a back hurts. Your back hurts. Great. I'm very happy that your back hurts. Is your, is your pain your back? Is a blessing or curse? Right, that was a curse. That's a blessing. Without this pain, you're not going to see me. Without you seeing me, you're not going to be healthy from your condition. Your back tells you that something in your life is not right. In my life, it's my back hurts. Yes, your body tells you something. Pain is great. Without pain, if you would put your hand on the stove, it will burn and eat, and, and you will not know it, and you will be crippled. So pain is great or not? Yes, it is. So you come with your pain to me. Let's see why you have pain. Very quickly, they tell you why they have pain. 90% of the time, it will come from their emotions. And then 90, and 100% and 95% of the time, it will come from their emotions when they're food because of the emotions. Very quickly, you get on that, and they see that you get on that, very quickly, they say to you, when do we start what you do? Very quickly. And then they bring the friends, the neighbors, and the family. Very quickly. I asked them this. After I sit with them for 30 minutes to 45 minutes, the first visit. I ask them a simple question. Anybody in your life ever, any doctor, any treater, ask you these questions and deal with you these things? Not one out of thousands that I've treated, tens of thousands, in 20 years that I've been practice, say yes. Not one. I worked in an office with a gynecologist, eye doctor, ophthalmologist, family doctor, x ray something, and something. And I was a chiropractor. So when I applied for the office, she laughed. First of all, she never heard what is chiropractic. And then when I got in, she was sure I'm not going to be able to pay my dues on the clinic because who's coming to chiropractor? All of them came there. Then I treated all of them, okay? the doctors and the patients of the doctors. But my friend, we became friends, was a GP, medical doctor, GP, general practitioner. He had lines of people because they came with insurance. He sat with the cards outside, 40, 50 sitting outside. My office was across his. Every once in a while, he called me and said, hey, Dr. Grimmer, can you come in, please? I would come in. He said, what do you think about this x-ray? So I look at the x-ray and say, well, this and this and that. And that, and that, and that, and that. And we will do that. He, 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 he was great with that. But look how 50, 60 people sitting outside, fighting for the door, and I'm inside with him, laughing. He sits behind a desk, he has a computer, you come in, you give his card, he pulls his card to the machine, and he said, so what can I do for you today? I have stomach pain. He comes out, I take this twice a day, see you in two weeks. Wow, that's fast. Next! They're fighting in the door, boom, 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 he comes in, put the card in, first of all the card. Card is the most important. Throat sore, ha, ding, 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 and the computer kicks it out. That's medicine. One minute. Two minutes. What does it have to do with health? Can you tell me? Medicine almost has nothing to do with health. Now, I'm not talking about car accident. I'm not talking about choked. I don't, I don't, I'm not talking about if you got burnt. I'm not talking about you got drowned, they're doing the best angelic world in the world. They're the best doctors in the world. I have nothing to do against them 
and all to do with us. All. Enjoy the future. If you will not know what to do, to be, to become, chiropractor is no future. Chiropractors want to be like medical doctors today. They're crazy. Somebody came to me with this notion and I said to him, listen, listen, listen. I said to him, I got a Bentley. Why do you want a Beetle? 68, uh, 1968 Beetle. Don't you want a Bentley? He said, ah, yeah, I didn't think about this one. So why are, we, why are you going toward medicine when you have chiropractic? It's more acceptable. It's more in. There's more, more money in it. Not necessarily. None of the above. You can fill up your clinics as many as you wish. If you are a real doctor, chiropractic. Fill them up. Not you can't fill them up. You must fill them up. Because the human race, as it's going with medicine, medicine wishes that everybody will be between one drug to 15 drugs a day. That's excellent business and everybody is doing all this good. The good people. The drug. Isn't it the truth? How many times I can emphasize that you are the real, 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 real doctors, real future of God? So, this 90 year old stepped into the car. He said, Doc, I need to share with you something. He said, I just married a 20 year old. And she got pregnant. He's all happy. Well, the old car says to him, Well, let me tell you a story. So he says, was this bear hunter, and it was, he was in a hurry to get out of the house, instead of taking his gun, he took his umbrella and went to the woods, and he encountered a huge bear, and he raised up his umbrella and he shot the bear, and the bear fell down. So then the old said, ah, it's not possible. Probably somebody else shot the bear. <laughs> yeah, he's got the idea. What else I can tell you? Or what else would you like to know before we wrap it up? Um, we'll go to this lady and then to you. Please. Um, would you say then that chiropractic should advocate to be able to treat um, disorders like asthma or psychological disorders, something like that? No. I'm implicating that any person that is sick, ill, diseased or healthy should see a chiropractor but chiropractors do not treat conditions they treat people with spines nervous systems the condition is only the vehicle and if the vehicle is asthma and is coming to you of course you're going to treat him but not for asthma for his disabilities that leads to asthma and one of them is subluxation. And when he comes with depression, would I take him to treat him? Absolutely. His depression is only the signal that something major is going on with his nervous system, immune system, physical system, hormonal system. And can I treat him to improve all these conditions and situations? Absolutely, yes. When people, when patient calls me and they say, do you treat asthma? I said, absolutely not. So they said, but so why they gave me your phone number? I said, because I can treat you with your asthma. And then when I want to go into it deeper, I said, no, no, no. There is consultation. You're going to enlist for the consultation if we have place for you, when we have place for you. And then in the consultation, I'll explain you exactly what can we do for you. And yes, we absolutely can help you. Yes. That's it. I'm, I'm just intrigued. Do you use 
You use NSA today, don't you? I use also NSA, I use chiropractic. Yeah. Within chiropractic, I use techniques. And the techniques I use, I convey them as the need for the patient. You don't need to do everything the same for everything. Sometimes just a word will alleviate some luxation. Sometimes just to remove the chicken will alleviate some luxation. Is that a chiropractic? Uh, it's arguable depending on... I don't care if it's yes. arguable or not. And I don't care <laughs> if anybody will think that he just wants to move the bone and everything will happen. That's in the stories. In my clinic, in other clinics, you do what you need to do as a doctor that understands all the systems and be able to access all the systems for your patient. I don't care for the philosophy. Move the bone, hold in one, move the thing, stick the finger, I don't care. You do what works for your patient. You're going to benefit your patient. But, and that's very important. You want to know techniques. I don't say need. You want to know techniques very well. So, can you? I have uh, a patient now with uh, cancer all over her body, everywhere. I want to see any chiropractor with physical adjustment adjusting. I want to see one. First of all, they won't take her. They won't take her. We said to me, listen, they said, the hospital sent her home, said, go back. So she came to me, she said, can you help me? I said, yes, get on table. That's it. So here, I apply the same. Okay? These two medical doctors, her husband and wife, they have the daughter-in-law as a doctor, her son is a doctor in something else, and the father-in-law of the other girl is a doctor. She gave birth to twins, girls, beautiful twin girls. And these two medical doctors know me very well. The, the mother, medical doctor, she's a GP, she sent to me anything at once. The father, her husband, he said to me, I know you help, you have, I, have, I, work, I treated all these kids. So I know you how, I don't know how, and he's totally afraid of it. And I said to him, everything is okay, everything is good, doesn't matter. So the twins, two months after they, were, they got born, one of the girls, if you would wash her or put clothes on her or touch her, she would scream her head off. So they ran through neurologists, neuro kids neurologists, they ran through and checked everything. Everything was right, correct, everything was okay, but the child, if you put her a little water, she screamed, so they couldn't wash her. They had to dress her very carefully, she would scream her head off. As the last resort, who they coming to? Chiropractor. By the way, they had to come to us first, before anything and everything. But it's so ingrained, the medicine method, that you're born in a hospital and you die in a hospital. It doesn't what happened to you, run the hospital. <coughs> and let me tell you something. Medical, medicine, science doing great in emergency. But if you go to them, not with emergency, they will bring you to emergency. And it gets cruel. So they brought the babies, I look at the baby, and said, oh, okay. So he said, what do you mean okay? I said, yeah. We'll deal with that. I didn't say fix it. I didn't say anything like that. I said, yeah, we'll do it. He looks at me and says, what are you going to do? I said, watch. So I go to the healthy girl, the healthy baby, and I in train her, adjust her, and she responds nicely and everything. And then I go to the other one and I say, watch carefully. And I put my hand on the child and she starts screaming. I said, okay. And then we apply the different technique. It doesn't matter now. What? In two seconds, she shut up. After the second treatment, they could wash her. They could wash her with regular and warm water. After the third treatment, they can close her and she was behaving totally normal. 
I want to see any neurologist do that. Please show me. So the grandfather medical doctor, he held his hand and got out of the room. He said, I don't know, he's doing like this and he left the room. Happily though, but it's still bothering him. She kissed me, she hugged me, she left. The, the room. Oh, something went in my mind. Ah, that's a great one. I went to the gym. So somebody said to me, can you spot me please? I said, sure. So he's laying on his back with weights and I come. As before I spotted him, he reaches and he said, hi, Dickman. Oops, sorry. It's recorded. Doesn't matter. So I said, hi, Dreamer. He said, are you Dr. Dreamer? I said, yeah. He said, I'm Dr. That and that. I said, ah, oh, he's a neurologist. He said, you know, I used to send you many patients. I said, I know. Why did you stop? He said, they never came back. <laughs> That's a real story. <laughs> I never can that. Now, would I send sometimes patients to medicine, medical doctors? Absolutely. When I think that they can be benefited with that area, with no hesitation, with the letter of phone call immediately to the medical doctor. No games. Uh, this guy came in with antalgic position. It was winter. We treated them with clothes on. Second week, nothing changed. I said, all day. Take your shirt off. Fully, it was cold. He had a tumor here. I said, okay. Immediately to the hospital. His, his wife was a personnel. The surgery, two days after that, he was out of surgery. They removed the, the tumor. He came back in straight with a letter. Thank you for saving my life. So, I said to him, you know that I'm continuing treating you. That doesn't matter. It's what brought it matter. That we need to treat. We're treating you, not your condition. Now, to tell you that I didn't miss some, I doubt that I didn't. I'm sure I missed. I'm sure I screwed up. I have no doubt I screwed up. But that's my requirement for myself to be the best doctor there is. To study more. To go to conventions. To go to seminars. To listen to the internet. To read. To advance at all times. To learn at all times. To develop at all times. All times to become the best doctors there are, to bring chiropractic to anything and everything in every place, it doesn't matter where. I treat people in tents, Bedouins, I go to the camps, or I treat people in jeep trips, on the plane. I was flying with Air Monarch, okay? there's Air Monarch, British, and I'm here in the cruising. If there is a doctor in the airplane, please run to the front of this car. So usually the medical doctor's run, right? So after the third one, nobody ran, I went. This lady was on the floor with a heart attack. She was in the middle of a heart attack. Now what's to chiropractor's a heart attack, guys? It's also an emergency, no? I said to the flying waitress, what happened? Uh, with the, what do you say, flying waitress? The stewardess! It's the same thing, no? <laughs> Heart attack, we do. So I look at her, she's an Israeli woman. I see that she has very new uh, scar. She had heart open, open surgery, open heart surgery. So I said, What's your name? Uh, and, uh, she's, I, she's telling my name. I said, I want you, first of all, to get on the chair. They look at me crazy, what is crazy? She's, Oh, what is she doing? No, 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 you're getting on the chair. So we put her, we put her on the chair, we stretch it up. I take her pulse, check the pulse, look at her eyes, look at the breathing, counting it. Are you doctors? And I said to her, I ask her name, it's very important to know her name because I'm dressing her and her name is listening to me. How your I uh, see you had surgery. Yes, six months ago she had three bypasses or four bypasses. I said to her, what triggered your heart attack? 
said, I don't know. I said, nah. Something happened. I said, I don't know. I said, I don't know. In doing what, your heart attack started. I said, I was eating my dessert. I said, okay. And what was wrong with the dessert? She said, there was a cockroach in the dessert. And when she saw the cockroach, it triggered a heart attack. Possible? Emotional? To physical? Visceral? Yes? Possible. Is she subluxated? From bottom to head. Because if she wasn't, what would be the base for her body to collapse? In the heart, on the lungs, on the feet, on the back? What? Well, it doesn't matter. So I said to her, okay, we're going to deal with it. Listen, I'm not saying things in that stuff. We're going to deal with it. So I called the stewardess, said to her, listen carefully. In English, she doesn't understand English. Ask her. You bring me one sugar pill, diet sugar pill, and a glass of warm tea and half half with lemonade. Okay? Yes. She, she brought me. She took the pill, said to her, open your mouth, make your tongue up. Put it under the tongue. <laughs> she closed her mouth and exactly in five seconds your heart rate will stop. And guess what? <laughs> Three seconds the heart rate stopped. Did she have a heart attack? I don't know. By the way, I don't care. Then I gave her the tea. Ah, so in and out, the second, the second officer came out to land the plane or not. We were above Greece or something. To land the plane or not. And I said, oh, hell no, you give birth to something. So I said, no, no, don't land the plane, we need to get to England. I had my own interest there. So he comes in and out. I said, don't wait five minutes. And then wait five minutes, and then after the five minutes, she got up, she drank a couple of things. About ten minutes later, she was back sitting with everybody else. They all clapped hands when she came back. She was all happy, and I said to the captain, straight to England. We got a big letter from them. I was happy. She was happy. Happy end story. Come back, guys. It doesn't matter what. <coughs> or you're a doctor, or you're sub something. And if you're a doctor, you're a carpenter. If you sub something, don't bother. Don't bother. It's not worth your time and your money. Last, last question. Or maybe not. Go ahead. Um, how do you, we talked a bit about chiropractic techniques. How do you decide when you um, are treating your patients which approach suits them best? So, if um, somebody will come with a really severe acute situation, am I going to move his bones? His body is in full defense. If you attack his body with motion, He'll get into more defense. He'll get out and swear at you and never come back. So you approach him with techniques that will be softer, more accommodating.